Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Italian Archaeological School, uh, which is very pleased to host uh, Elena Bart Caridi, known to our friends at Lela tonight. Bart Caridi does not need much introduction. I will say a few words for the younger students who have not yet had the opportunity to meet Bart Caridi. She is Athenian by birth and also German by elective affinities. She was born member of the Institute and the Archaeology Eteria. She has taught at the University of Salzburg in Austria and Saarland University in Saarbrück in Germany, visiting professor at the University of Nicosia, Cyprus, and the Forget Museum in Malibu, California. She's a specialist on many topics, with paintings and Greek classical painting and sculpture, uh, ancient houses, and uh, always with an original and personal vision. For the title of this evening's lecture, she has chosen the words of Pliny the Elder, Lati de Pingere, which in the 35th book of the Naturalis Historia, the first paintings made in mosaic. In particular, she will talk about late classical and Hellenic mosaics. Dear Leila, welcome and thank. Thank you so much and the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Floor mosaics were created in Greece, most probably in Athens, in the late 5th century BC, in connection with a new type of house, which might be called noble. In Greece, the inner court became right angled and colonnaded. It was the first time that columns, a decidedly noble architectural element, appeared in houses. But nevertheless, a putter, ducks, uh, only in the inside. Moreover, the main rooms had wall decorations, ceiling decorations, and floor mosaics. Later, marble sculptures appeared as well. A well-preserved example is the so-called House of the Mosaics in Eretria. About 376 BC. There is a peristyle court, a second simple one without friends, and there are symposia. There are more than one, which is often the case. Although noble houses were usually larger than the far more numerous, simpler ones, it is not size per se which distinguished this new residential architecture. Such houses reflected a new way of life, which a part of the Athenian society had cho chosen for itself in the late seventh century. That is, some high-class Athenians like to stay far off from the Agora at home, feasting in their andrones, but also discussing various fundamental issues with like-minded friends. Whether this new way of life was likewise valued or not in the other cities where noble houses appeared, such houses did soon spread over the world of Greece and farther afield to the east, south, and west throughout the world of the Mediterranean. The wall decorations, as for instance, 
the late Hellenistic one from Athens, Keramikos, where a color and model staff work that both hid the cheap building material and imitated the Sodomic ashlar masonry of monumental architecture in order to ennoble the room they were in. Consequently, large figured scenes did not appear on the walls, only small ones cropped up sometimes in the narrow string course, as for instance, the scenes of actors in a house in Delos, according to Maison de Comédien. The houses in Delos belong to the second half of the second up to the early first centuries BC, and I will not mention a more exact date for every single mosaic we see. As regards the ceiling decorations, although of all ancient architectural decorations we know the least about ceilings, we do know from literary mentions that there were ceiling decorations already in the earliest Athenian noble houses. For instance, in the works of Aristophanes, the uncouth Velicleon is told by his son who tries to teach him good manners what to do in a symposium. He must stretch out ele elegantly on a cleaner and look at the ceiling decorations and at the room curtains in order to give the impression of a connoisseur in which plot the Cleon later fails miserably. As the wasps were first performed in Athens in 422, this verse, this verse suggests that in these years there existed ceilings, ceiling decoration in Athenian noble houses. Moreover, Plato mentions in the Politeia that someone is looking at the ceiling decorations. It has been possible to reconstruct some building decorations from houses in Delos. For instance, one from the so-called Maison de Chaux. In this decoration, there appear no figured scenes, only stripes of decorative motifs. Obviously, the ceiling decoration never took a leading role in the iconography of the Hellenistic noble houses, it was probably even less effective than the string course thing with the wall decorations. The leading uh, no. this leading role was undertaken, strange though this might seem, by the floor mosaics. While the wall decorations were an imitation of the Eschler masonry of monumental architecture, the floor mosaics were a new idea altogether. Pebbles were already used as a flooring material in Greece. When the wish arose to have images on the floor, these self same pebbles were used. One created with them sent set into a layer of fine plaster against one coarser plaster, light colored figures and ornaments against a dark background. Such floors have the same practical advantages as the simple pebble floors, being watertight and easy to wash, yet their images were above all. This light on dark in a mosaic of the late 5th century from Athens, found under the parliament, with the image of the griffin attacking a deer. The pebbles were packed as close as possible in order to hide the backgrounds and give the impressions of a more or less level surface. This was done from, because from the very beginning, the mosaic masters strove to create images with the character of paintings. The we, they wished to paint with stone, lapis de fingere, as Pliny put it. Accordingly, their main concern was to overcome the discontinuity of the material they used, namely pebbles, which were inescapably of many different shapes. 
Moreover, in their ambition to be painters, they soon introduced colors in the mosaics. First, the red, as in an andron in in Eritrea, later also blue, green, and other colors. By the way, in ancient Greek art, colors and indeed polychromy have been certainly present in every art since the middle seventh century, but it is above all in painting that they have the most dominant role. Just as the peristyle court contributed to the new nobility of the houses, so too did to the polychromy of the wall decorations, the ceiling decorations, and above all, the floor mosaics ennoble their main rooms. Nevertheless, polychromy did not change the fundamental principle in Greek art that colors had, had no significance value. A color iconography, as seen in the art of later periods, for instance, the Middle Ages, did not exist in Greek art. The wall decorations in the noble houses were kept as near as possible buildings' walls, and therefore could show no large paintings. In the mosaics, there was a large restriction since these were conceived from the outset for the floor. The floor offered, obviously, space enough for large images, and thus it was the mosaics which represented most effect effectively the house iconography, and through them the floor was, as it were, upgraded. That it was not regarded as a second rank surface is evident not only in the size of the images, but also in the choice of subjects for them. There appear ornamental films, as in the Andron and Sikior, which are so, as well as figure scenes. In these, the themes are often difficult, and even scenes with Olympian gods are by no means rare, which would be inconceivable in the Christian house. Obviously, man did not hesitate to treat on the divine figures. Among the gods, it's above all Dionysos who occurs most frequently in mosaics as the god of wine, of the symposium, of the joie de vivre in general. Moreover, since he is also the god of the theater, there appear very often theatrical masks as well as sometimes scenes from theater pieces. The precedence of Dionysos applies certainly to the small string core scenes of the wall decorations too. We already saw the theatrical scenes of the Maison de Comédien, yet, yet the large mosaic images had of course much more impact. Apart from this difference in the decoration of the house, a hierarchy of space was also observed. At first, wall and ceiling decorations, as well as floor mosaics, adorned only the androns. Later, mosaics were also found in the peristyle, as well as in rooms on the upper floor, or upper store of, of houses. It is not worthy, by the way, that although floor mosaics appear also in sanctuaries, temples, and public buildings, about 80% of Hellenistic mosaics have been found in private houses. In their constant struggle against it to think up new techniques. A very successful one was the so-called opus tessellatum, in which cubes of stone, so-called tessere, took the place of pebbles. This tessere was 
contributed also to brilliance effects. Even ceramic tessere were used, and the stone tessere were sometimes painted over. Another new technique which worked even more effectively against the discontinuity of material was the so-called opus vermiculatum, consisting of tiny tessere, sometimes only one millimeter square. Such mosaics reached the, the greatest technically possible affinity to painting. As the opus vermiculatum was, of course, the most expensive technique, it was often reserved for the central part of a mosaic. It was made in the atelier on a tray or slab and then inserted into this part as an emblem, emblem in the picture. Triton might be dated in the early third century BC. Here, the mosaic master has even dispensed with colors, reverting to the earliest white on black coloring. All in all, a variety of technical means is characteristic for the, for the Hellenistic mosaics. Philippe Brunot, the great expert on mosaics, distinguished six categories on technique in the late Hellenistic mosaics of Delos. Natural pebbles were still used, as well as tile or pottery fragments, chips and splinters of marble, tessera, and other materials. Of course, the mosaics of the highest quality were made in opus decelatum and above all in opus vermiculatum. A superb example is the squatting dog of a mosaic from the region, region of the palace in Alexandria. It shows how the plastic quality of the body of the dog, as well as the texture of his coat, of its coat, and the alert expression of its eyes. In such image, images, the wish of the mosaic masters to paint with stones seems to come true. I cannot readily propose an exact date for this masterpiece, perhaps second century BC. Anyway, the variety of techniques, which moreover could appear together in one and the same piece, makes the dating of Hellenistic mosaics often very difficult. Yet the fact as such that there is no neat evolutionary sequence of techniques to be found in them, reveals above all the constant struggle of the masters to exploit or even combine various technical possibilities so as to create ways to achieve the effect of a painting. Let us now go back in time and look at some masterly pebble mosaics of the fourth century. It's no wonder that in Pella, the capital of the my, mighty Macedonian kingdom of these years, there were spacious houses with pebble mosaics of outstanding quality, like the so-called Dionysos house with two here a model of the house uh, and with pebble mosaics of outstanding quality. The best of them were transported in the museum in Pella. The Dionysus house is named after the god in such a mosaic. Another masterpiece from this house is the lion hunt. Both may be dated about 330 BC. Fine strips of lead strengthen some outlines. Uh, you see on the profile of the, of the hunters. While in those of Opus Tesselatum and above all Opus Vermiculatum, only variously colored tessere were used 
to render the plasticity of the figures as which we saw. Moreover, in both mosaics from the house of Dionysos, stripes of gray pebbles render a modeling darkness. You see them here. That is a shading without a contrasting light, a shading which suggests the plasticity of the body or the folds of a garment. In painting, the modeling darkness must have been invented already in the earlier 5th century BC. Nothing is preserved, but Attic white ground base images give an image of it. For instance, the figure of Hera on a cup in Munich, about 470 BC. Henceforth, the modeling darkness remained effective in painting. It occurs, for instance, in the scene of Pluto abducting Persephone, a wall painting in the so-called Persephone tomb in Vergina of about 330 BC. In the mosaic, uh, that is the, the peplos of, the, of Persephone. In the mosaic images, the effect of modeling darkness lies with that in painting, depending, of course, in the mosaic's quality. For instance, in the centaur proudly holding a key hair, a pebble mosaic of the early third century from Rhodes, which does not reach the high quality of the Pella mosaics, we saw the modeling darkness is rudimentary. An important invention in painting depiction of the ground surface. A famous example is the wall painting on the facade of Felix the, the second tomb in Vergina, about 300. Uh, 36 BC. He has seen in the copy made right after it is the, the lion hunt of King Fee among in a simplified form, as seen, for instance, in the stag hunt, a masterly pebble mosaic, <laughs> from the house of the abduction of Helena, a rich mansion in Pella, so-called after, after another masterly mosaic. The stag hunt mosaic is signed by Gnosis. He is the oldest known name. His is the oldest known name of the mosaicist, and it is a pity no other work of this great master is known. Look at the excellent modeling darkness of the bodies of the hunters and their cloaks, as well as the bodies of the animals. The ground is also represented in the lion hunt. While in the Dionysos mosaic, there is no ground where the two rear feet of the panther should rest, apparently in order to convey the impression that the boat is flying. He sits with sovereign ease, naked, holding his cursors. In the course of time, the image of Dionysos in the mosaics is transformed. For instance, in an emblem in Opus Vermiculatum, from the peristyle court in the so-called house of the masks in Delos, the god who is riding a tiger and holding his thyrsus and, and the symbol is fully clothed and his clothing had, has a much richer polychromy. Uh, it doesn't appear anymore, it has faded. Compared with the late classical Dionysus we just saw, 
this late Hellenistic one is impressive in a new, effusive way. That the god is framed by centaurs, confirms since even creatures like the centaurs, which in all their images had never anything to do with him, now follow him. One of them even holds a crater, a symposium vase that looks quite incongruous in his hands. In another mosaic in Delos, the god has wings, a fantastic feature that is not motivated by any religious belief, but serves only to exalt his appearance. He's riding a leopard with the head of a tiger, and uh, he's holding his thyrsus. His cantharos, lying overturned on the ground, hints at the delights of drunkenness. By the way, this cantharos shows masterly highlights, splendor, as Pliny called them. After mentioning the invention of light and shade in painting, he added, later was added splendor, something distinct from light. Highlights turned up in painting shortly after the middle of the fourth century. They never appear on the ground of the scene, only on figures, and they are there to enliven the forms. For instance, in the painting of the marble throne in Vergina, in, uh, in the Eurydice uh, tomb in Vergina of about 340 BC, Hades and Persephone appear standing on a frontal four horse chariot. On the left part of it, the highlights are best preserved on the brown horse. The mosaic masters adopted the highlights from painting soon afterwards. Let us conclude our review of images of Dionysus in Hellenistic mosaics with that from the Casa del Fauno in Pompeii, end of second century BC. Here, a childish Eros dares to appear more or less in the guise of Dionysus. As we know, the late Hellenistic childish Erotes are up to anything. This one is ivy like the god, and is having fun riding a tiger with the mane of a lion. He looks eager to drink from a cantharos, having even thrown the thyrsus of Dionysus on the ground in order to hold the base with the one hand and the reins with the other. Dionysus is also present indirectly in the mosaic of the peristyle court in the house of the dolphins in Delos, so called after this mosaic. In the four scenes, in the four corners of the mosaic, childish erotes, as tiny winged figures in short tunics, are riding on dolphins. Each eros is holding a device which reveals to whom he is connected the Thyrsus of Dionysus, the Trident of Poseidon, the Caducus of Hermes, and the Club of Heracles. The Erotes parody a contest that took place in Rome involving single acrobats and pairs of horses. Every acrobat had to spring from the one horse to the other while these were in full gallop. In the Delian mosaic, this contest takes place substituting for the horses the pair, the, the, dol, the pair of dolphins, the erotes are riding. The winner is to be identified as the one riding the dolphin with the victory crown in, it, in its mouth. It's the one we see. Uh, he is the one holding the thyrsus, proclaiming thus his connection with Dionysus. Consequently, it is the god 
who is the victor. The theme of an event in Rome appearing in the Delian mosaic is not surprising since there was a close connection of Delos with Italy. Nor do we need to wonder that childish erotists take part in an acrobatic contest as representatives of gods, of gods and of Heracles. Because as I said, in late Hellenistic images, these erotists may appear in every possible situation. This outstanding mosaic is also signed. While Gnosis in the mosaic from Pella, we just saw signed simply with his name, Gnosis EP. In the Delian mosaic, the master makes also his origin known, Asclepiades from Aradus EP. Aradus is a city in Phoenicia, yet, yet the mosaic is purely Greek in style, as is the name of the master. Since Dionysus was also the god of the theater, theatrical scenes appear very often in the mosaics, as well as in the wall decorations. We have seen those in the Maison de Comédie. Moreover, theatrical masks are a very frequent theme. Entwined in a network of fruits, wreaths, and flowers, they are found as a rule in the garlands that mostly surround the scene, as in the mosaic with the childish arrows appearing as Dionysus we just saw. Such garlands may also appear alone as the one on the threshold of the entrance courtyard in the Casa del Fauno. Such a mask may even be the only subject of a mosaic. One of the most impressive is the mask of the old slave, an emblem in Opus Vermiculatum of extraordinary quality from Rose. The highlights on its face, on this face, are masterly. The characterization of the old man makes almost a portrait out of this mask. Of excellent quality are also the theater scenes on two emblemata found on marble trays on which they had been transferred from the atelier. They stood on the opposite sides of a white mosaic floor in the so-called Villa of Chichester in Pompeii. They are signed by the Samian Dioscurinis. He was not an isolated case of a gifted master from this side. Excellent quality have been found in some. In the first emblem by Dioscurinis, bright colored cloth actors perform as street musicians on a narrow stage before the yellowish wall of the house. The first actor plays a tambourine, the second cymbals, and the woman a double flute. The actors were all male. For a male role, they wore a brown mask. For a female role, a white mask. The maskless bo boy without an instrument had apparently a non-speaking role. Late Roman mosaics with the same thing, uh, theme discovered in Lesbos disclosed that this scene belongs to the second act of, of the play, The Possessed Theophorumene, by Menander, the most famous of the, uh, writer of the new comedy. The same applies to the second mosaic by Dioscurides. Again, the name of the piece uh, represented in this scene was discovered from another late Roman mosaic in the same house in Lesbos, with inscriptions which reveal that the subject is a scene from the first act of the comedy, The Woman at Breakfast, Sin Aristose by Menander. Three women, that is, men with white masks, sit at breakfast. From the known plot of the comedy, Langone, appearing in the 
the mosaic as the young hostess is a foundling. And she tells her friends, the prostitute Pythias and Pythias' mother, uh, the old procuress Philinis, that a young man seduced her and she is pregnant. They love each other, but the young man's uh, rich father wishes his son to marry another girl. The required happy end comes about when a document is found which proves that Plangon is the legitimate daughter of a distinguished citizen. So they marry. In my remarks on Hellenistic mosaics, I had insisted on the constant wish of the mosaicists to overcome the materiality of their art, to make their work as much as possible like paintings, taking over new pictorial means from these as much as technically possible in order to succeed to paint with stone, lapide pingere. Yet this does not mean that they copy paintings. Although the mosaicists took paintings as their model, although they followed closely the development in this art, adopting various attainment in it and trying to achieve equivalent results in their works, they not only developed their own technical possibilities, but they most certainly created a new art with a distinct character of its own, as well as the power of its own to fascinate the viewer. When we consider these two arts, painting and mosaics, there is also something else to, to worth mentioning. Let me remind you of what Peter Paul Rubens wrote in the letter of 1637 to Francis Junius, praising the diligence with which Junius in his work wrote, all the opinions and the receipts, which are widely scattered, end of course. Nevertheless, Rubens warned Junius that nowadays we can only in our imagination follow the works of the ancient painters, since, I quote, to try to grasp the images which are only described in words is to act like Orpheus, who tried three times to take hold of Euridice's shadow. The images disappear, letting down our hopes, end of quote. Everyone who has tried to try paintings from the written sources will agree only too well and ruefully with Rubens' verdict. Moreover, the so-called copies of Greek masterpieces in the Roman wall paintings of the Pompeian styles have also proven to be unlikely to lead us to the lost Greek originals. Thus, only some wall paintings in Macedonian tombs, as well as a few others recent, other recent finds, offer us the possibility of looking at original 4th century BC and Hellenic. Greek paintings. But let us admit it, there yet remain essential gaps in our knowledge of ancient Greek painting. In contrast, when we turn to mosaics, we have to do only with originals. Thus, they allow an insight in Hellenistic art as a high quality pictorial group. At the transi transition to and in the beginning of the first century BC, a fundamental transformation in the appearance of the main rooms of the noble houses, if we may still call them thus, took place in Rome. Everything that was characteristic of Hellenistic wall decorations namely the combination of color and the relief, the concept of imitating the Eschler masonry of the public buildings was given up and they knew the so-called second Pompeian style was created. 
Here, wall systems of paintings covered the walls of these rooms, and in these paintings, there was an explosion of figural images. A comparison of a wall decoration we have already seen, that of the Maison de Comédien in Delos, with second style uh, wall decorations in the bedroom from the Villa of Anius Sinister at Boscoreale, about 50 to 40 BC, now in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, shows the completely new character of the walls. The window is later open, there is not to be taken into account. It reveals, together with other contemporary phenomena in the decoration of house or villas, which I cannot go into here, a new way of life, which, however, was limited to a certain part of the Republican society. We may recall that the birth of the noble houses in late classical Athens, likewise, concerned only a part of the Athenian society of these years. I cannot go in detail here into the much discussed subject of the birth of the second style, but as regards our subject today, it is evident that with the second style, the role of being the main field of pictorial decoration in the house was reclaimed by the walls. The floor mosaics lost their there now appeared in them mostly modest, plain black ornaments or figures on a white ground. It is also significant <coughs> that about the time when the wall paintings of the second style gained, as it were, the upper hand in the decoration of houses and villas, the mosaics, for their part, spread out from the floor to the walls and even to the vaults of the city. For instance, in a summer triclinium, a small courtyard of the Casa del Mosaico di Netuno e di Amphitrite in Pompeii, the two gods appear on the right wall mosaic, standing between columns. On the left wall, over an impeum with three niches, there appear mosaics of hansons. Mosaics occurred even on columns. For instance, these those covered with mosaic in opus de Celatum and seashell, seashells from a garden pavilion of the so-called Villa of the Mosaic Columns in Pompeii, third quarter of the first century AD. Nevertheless, such columns appear very rarely, since, as a rule, mosaics needed an architectural surface to support them. This spreading out of the mosaic in the Roman times shows how the mosaic masters tried hard not to be left behind, but they were not successful. And even though floor mosaics with large figural images did later reappear in Roman houses and villas, the exclusive role, the exclusive leading role in the decoration of the Hellenistic noble houses was never again regained. Thank you. Thank you, Leila, so much for this uh, interesting and colorful, uh, Very colorful. <laughs> lecture. And now, whoever wants to can speak also online with questions and uh, insights. Who wants to interview? Riccardo di Cesare. Thank you so much, Professor Valdacchelli, for this very rich history of Lapide Pittere. 
and uh, you saw, saw very well the connection between uh, uh, mosaics and uh, and paintings, in particular in office the big lab. Uh, if you, we go to the origins of uh, mosaic and paper mosaics, do you think that uh, the, the mosaic can we, we should, you show these images with the uh, figure in uh, white on dark uh, background? Do you think that this uh, painting in Lapide would be influenced by uh, red painting and instead of, of wall painting? This is the question. Perhaps, okay. perhaps. I can't say because it is a different dimension. I don't, I think they just, they used the same pebbles they, they did and they put a little color. Well, it was the same, uh, but it was not because the, the, why the red figure is uh, not quite uh, white and black. I cannot say. Thank you so much. Questions online? Uh, online, yes. Uh, there is uh, Mrs. Notakuru who asks, thank you for your, for a wonderful overview of the mosaic. Easy it is to define the origin of the small stones used. Of this? May I ask you how easy it is to define the origin of the small, small stones used? Uh, they, it is not difficult because there are uh, lower uh, floors which are only with pebbles, river pebbles. They are river pebbles and they were uh, everywhere to find. So uh, they are also illustrated in uh, mosaic books that the, the, that, the, uh, that they began, that the usual uh, uh, Floor, floors were with pebbles be, before they became uh, pebble mosaics is, uh, is easy to follow. There are uh, uh, examples. Thank you very much. Hola, sin haripiria, porfiria filaniotu. It was the, the only one at this time. Thank you so much, Bella. Um, um, I'm always wondering about uh, the relationship between mosaics and paintings and the world paintings. And uh, uh, you mentioned. Do you prefer to come here? I wonder about how shape is achieved in the pebbles with the mountain. And uh, I'm always wondering if these mosaics copied, they already have painted what they did after the storm, whether they follow a painting that they that they produced first, and then they tried to, to reproduce the painting. The table. This is something that I, I always wonder whether they did 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 the colors that they use, but you know, do something very specific on shaping and see how the designs are used. What colors do they use for shaping compared to painting? The shading, what that? 
all ways a little bit less fine, but that's on pictures, they are all painting, this is natural. They had to do with the 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 Πήγαινε τώρα, στάσου, 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 να πάμε γρήγορα. Άντε, μόλι. Εδώ, ή το προηγούμενο. That the people in the 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 it's interesting to further investigate. Well, they do, it is a little, also the, 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 the yellow of the, old, of the old one on the right is uh, too much. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see on, on the left one, it's red. I think this is every every artist. To play with the uh, shadows, and they were they were handicapped from the, the desert. They were not painters. Other questions? Thank you very much, Serge. I just wondered, I was wondering uh, whether you could give us a good addition of additional materials concerning the human designs which you presented to us at the very end, which was the data we mistake for the phone. So we have pictures of natural materials. For example, the shells mentioned in the I don't know some in the that were dead or something like that. The Roman monarchs. I have no knowledge over so many mosaics that I can say what other things they did. But of course, the mosaics know a new history in the, in the later Roman period. And they may use, but I don't know, in the Hellenistic settlement. Say something in there, we are not in the only for 
But the flexibility of a relation between uh, mosaics and rocks in at the beginning, if you think of the geometrical patterns, for instance. This is a very difficult uh, situation because we have very, very little practically nothing. When asked, we can know or we can know that they use pebbles simply as pebble blocks and but then they painted some pebbles and uh, or they did the, uh, the pebble mosaics but we don't know if besides this this is the way it went but that they had the idea to make the, the, the floors like the tapestry is, of course, very natural. Why we had so, so little, of course, for such uh, they, they are not, uh, we don't have them. But it is very, very possible. Because also in the, in the, paint, the first type paintings, Sometimes you have some textiles on the wall. Yes. It, remember yes. with the. Yes. And the textiles is uh, open. This uh, is, is almost completely unknown. Very few times. So thank you again. And thanks to the friends and colleagues on Lasso Wine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May I finish the pages?